So I recently purchased a Canon SX30IS to replace an aging PowerShot G1, uh, which had been a good camera, but you know it's pretty old now. And so far, I'm happy with the SX30. Um, one of the things that drew me to it was the ability to put the CHDK firmware on there. If you haven't heard of it, go Google CHDK. Uh, you'll find the their site. They support many, many, many Canon cameras, and they add a lot of features to your camera that weren't put there by Canon, that the camera is capable of, but Canon just doesn't enable. One of the things that you can do is a remote shutter, shutter release where you plug it into the USB port. You can hit a button, and it'll fire the camera for you, so you don't have to worry about you know jittery shots, especially if you're doing macro or kind of long exposure stuff. Uh, so that's one of the things that I really wanted to try. But you... Well, you can buy, uh, I think, these release things online, but I decided to build my own, like many people that use this do. Um, so, after kind of reading around a little bit online and just sort of thinking about how I'd want to do it, this is what I came up with. It's pretty simple. Um, it's just uh, the smallest Radio Shack project box that they make is uh, what I started with here. And um, for the power source, the Canon, the SX30, requires some of the Canon cameras don't need but you know don't need maybe three volts or so but the SX30 requires at least four volts or maybe just a hair under but it's right around four so I wound up uh, having to use three of these uh, button cell batteries that you can see here they came out of uh, an Energizer A23 battery which is kinda neat because it's one 12 volt battery that has eight of these button cells in it uh, it's a real cheap way to get them this holder is just a, an in-cell holder from Radio Shack that I kind of cut down to make it fit these batteries, or well, fits kind of a rough term, loose term here, but it does hold them pretty well. And that holder is just hot glued to the bottom of the project box. Then what I did, because knowing me, I'll do something stupid like plug batteries in backwards or whatever. So to help protect my nice expensive camera, I've got this diode right here that will keep that if I plug those batteries in backwards it will not allow, allow that current to flow and so I don't have to worry about uh, reversing the polarity and screwing up the camera so that's what that's about uh, basically I drilled a couple holes and put uh, a push button here and a uh, quarter inch jack because that's what I had laying around there the quarter inch jack that way that's there so I can uh, plug in a you know an end and run it run a longer cable with a button on the end of that cable so I don't have to lug this box around if I don't want to and uh, I haven't done that yet, but that's the plan, and that's what that's there for. So either either switch you want to use, you can. And then on the other end, it just comes out to a USB female uh, connector here that I just cut off of an extension. And then I've used zip ties here inside this box for stress release, stress relief on that cable, which seems to work very well. Um, so I've got it hooked up here to my volt, my old voltmeter through a very long convoluted series of wires and we'll try it out. So here we go, I can hit the button and we get 4.3 volts. There is some voltage drop, about 0.2 volt voltage drop across that diode and that's why you're not seeing four and a half there plus the length of cable I've got here, kind of ridiculous, but there you go. And I've tried it a couple times now with the camera and it works beautifully. So there it is, there's my uh, remote shutter release box and thanks for watching.